My name is Mike McKenzie and I am a singer-songwriter from Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I was born in a pretty musical home. My parents always played tons of music and we sang just all of the time. Um, we had a beat up old piano in our house and my mum taught me how to play it when I was really young. Um, and I never really learned how to read music, like sheet music, so most of the time it was just a case of feeling it out. And, and then, but actually I think that's probably where my love for writing came about. Um, I think that approach sort of let me freely explore ideas without the sort of, I don't know, like confines of rules, <laughs> or traditional rules anyway. Um, not to say that my like writing's abstract or anything, just that I don't, you know, find myself looking at chord sheets and checking if like scales fit or, you know, melodies are the way they're sort of supposed to be written. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I had like a, a massively eclectic soundtrack growing up. Um, but I think that the main thing I took away from that was, was um, harmony um, and harmonies. I think like, we would listen to like the Beatles and Queen and Simon Garfunkel, like all the way through to like West End musical soundtracks. So there was just like constantly harmonies and constantly music playing. Um, like even now, like I think it, it feels weird like not having music on in the background somewhere. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm sort of, it's part of, it's like air. Like it just needs to be there at all times. <laughs> I think my biggest influence, this sounds like, naff but honestly I think it's like the the sort of musical community around me like here in Edinburgh I'm not really like a fanatical person when it comes to sort of famous artists and stuff but like hearing live music and the stories behind it and the processes and meeting the people that have created it I think that's definitely how I like fill up my heart and fill up my tank um if I'm feeling a little low that definitely inspires me a lot hearing other people do it you know so I recently launched like a, a new live setup where I'm using loops um, for much more like produced sound on stage which has been really fun um, that's been a huge learning curve because it's normally or up until now anyway it's just been like me and a piano or me and a guitar um, and so this way it's um, yeah a bit of a game changer I do I love playing stripped back like I love playing like those like little intimate shows where you can really tell stories about the songs and stuff but there's something really exciting about creating like a massive like wall of sound that just sort of yeah gets me in the feels i think one of the biggest challenges being a musician is trying not to compare yourself to others too much i think like the commercial side of working in music is unfortunately just a big numbers game so like whether it's streams or likes or like you know followers or any of that stuff it's all like very um f like stat based um but i think trying to balance my just love of music and my like need to do that with the need for stability as as a full-time musician is like that's the hardest part to manage because to sort of make it work as a job you have to be really aware of these numbers and be like making sure that things are working properly but at the same time, that's directly comparing yourself to other people. So it's really kind of, it's a fine line and it's hard to, to balance that. So I think that's probably the hardest or the most challenging part of yeah being a, a musician. If I could give my younger self some advice, I think it would be to care less about what other people might think. Um, like I'm getting better at it with age, but I still waste far too much time like worrying about what other people might think about my music or the way I present myself or, you know, how I look in a photo or like what font I used on a poster. Like I just, none of that matters. Like as long as you're being your authentic self and you're, you're doing what you want to do, then like that's enough, I think. Um, so I, I identify as a queer person and I think maybe there's like a level of insecurities that stems from being othered sometimes like or feeling othered sometimes i had a like amazing upbringing and my family have always been super supportive and um you know i've luckily never really experienced much pushback about my identity or anything but there's definitely still a part of me that feels different and 
I think maybe that worry about what other people might think actually stems from just wanting to fit in. Um, not that I would change anything because I think I really love my life and um, I have an amazing husband and, and we have an amazing life together. But um, I think that insecurity probably stems from caring too much about what other people think. So when it comes to like writing I think this might be normal I think this is normal for like other songwriters I've definitely heard other songwriters talking about it but it might be like unusual to perhaps someone that doesn't write um, or is like new to writing Um, but I tend to write in gibberish a lot of the time and just sort of feel out ideas and feel out melodies so I'll be like playing some chords or like working on a track or something and then I'll just sing like it doesn't there can be some real words there can be some just like noises but like it's a great place to like jump off from so I like I do that with nearly if not all of my writing sometimes even lyrics appear like out of nowhere (laughs) um and like so many songwriters as well like I go to like a few different songwriter nights and one of the things that always comes up is like I didn't like I can't take credit for this song because it doesn't feel like I wrote it it just kind of wrote itself and it's such a true, honest feeling. Like sometimes you're just kind of jamming and something appears and then it's a song and you're like performing it. Like I have to take credit for this, but it just kind of came around by accident. But um, but yeah, so that's probably, I don't know if that's unusual. I don't think it is. <laughs> and then I love to like switch it up in the studio or if I'm writing as well. So like I love, so I do a lot of production stuff and I write with a lot of other people. Um, and do lots of collaborations and um, and everybody works differently and I love that and I love sort of being in a creative space where you can try try new ways of creating um, and it always ends up you know bringing something fresh to the, the table I think like whether it's like I'm going to write a song on guitar now I'm going to write a song on piano now I'm going to um, pick up a bass and, and try and write something on that or I'm just going to sing with no no backing or anything and just kind of figure it out or like go in and produce a whole track and then like top line that so just write the melody and lyric on top of the the finished production so like I love all of those things I think they're all great ways to you know work on stuff and and keep things fresh I think the the best reaction I've ever had um, to any of my music has been a track called Love Like This um, for me, um, the the song itself was about um, my husband and I were, were long distance for, for a few years and um, part of the struggle of that or part of the struggle with, with um, the next step in our relationship was trying to figure out where we would, we would land. So he's an actor, I'm a musician and we both had our communities. Um, he was in Brooklyn and I was in Edinburgh and so one of us was going to have to give up that community and give up what we'd built in our in our hometowns and that idea was so daunting um and scary um and that's where the song came from me but when i released it someone wrote to me and uh and told me about what it meant to them and and how much it had meant to them and um, basically the, the, their partner had been through cancer treatment and the whole experience changed both of them I think forever um, when they'd reached out they told me that the song was exactly how they'd felt about relearning each other as a couple and how they were having to like figure out their relationship again and and um, how this song was just the exactly summed up their sort of new relationship post this like horrifically traumatic part of their lives and I think at that point I think that was the first time I'd ever realized properly that music is so um, subjective and is so unique to the listener and I think knowing that changed how I then saw my music when it was out in the world and changed my sort of I think appreciation of what music can do um, and the power of it and how you know just because it means one thing to me doesn't mean it's going to mean that same thing to you and it was it was really that was the first time that I'd ever really considered that for my own music 
Um, and so that was that was just amazing. It was just life changing. It's it, all of a sudden when I release music, it's not mine anymore. And I, I sort of that mentality changed because of that letter and because of that um, person reaching out about their story. I think like with all of my music now, that's like the main thing that I hope people take away from my music is that they can relate to it. You know, um, I think for most creatives, the ideas and thoughts in in work is is extremely specific and personal. But I think if someone else can find themselves in that, whether it's a song or a piece of art or anything at all, then I think that's a great job. I think like that's it. So like that's that's what I think I would hope that people would take away from my music is that it's relatable and that they can they can find themselves in it somewhere. And it might be a different version of the 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 way I find myself in it or someone else finds themselves in it. But if they find themselves in it, then I feel like I've done a good job. <laughs> if you wanna like keep in touch or check out some of my music or um just see what I've been up to, um then the best place is probably um social media or my mailing list as well. Um so if you follow me it's at Mike McKenzie online on all of the social places and then my website's mikemckenzieonline.com and on the website you can find the mailing list and I'll send out um, little updates every now and again but feel free to reach out and say hello um, and thank you so much for listening and I hope to see you one day maybe at a show. <laughs>